Welcome back to our channel, Machinery and Technology. Today we have a truly electrifying topic, recycled metal. The global recycled metal market size was valued up to 1.7 billion US dollars in 2022, and it's anticipated to grow in a compound annual growth rate of 5.6% from 2023 to 2030. The market growth is driven by increasing emphasis on the secondary production of metal owing to environmental concerns such as energy consumption and scrap disposal. Metal recycling is an important aspect as a metal can be recycled several times without any alternations in their characteristics. As a result, scrap metal possesses major significance for us as a raw metal for secondary production. So if you are ready to spark your curiosity, let's dive right in. Iron and steel are produced in the so-called blast furnace process and I will now explain to you in general terms how it works. In general, it can be said that in the blast furnace process iron ore is reduced to the travel with the help of the carbon. Blast furnaces can have different size and shapes, but how they are constructed is different. The principle is always the same. In the upper area, there is an opening through which the stupid is filled with coal iron ore and other additives such as a limestone and hot air is a blown in the bottom. In between, there are different segments of floors with different temperatures in which different chemical processes take place. During the course of this process, the solid continuously move downwards and the gases move upwards. At the end, liquid pig iron is created. Let's take a closer look at a process in a detail right at the bottom of the furnace where the air is introduced and coal burns with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, which creates a lot of heat, which is why it's hot as there. The resulting carbon dioxide flow upwards and reacts with a further carbon to form carbon monoxide. This reaction is also called modular equilibrium. The reason of the reaction are the lack of oxygen in this zone which was already used up in the previous step of the floor down that iron is created. The resulting iron slowly migrates downwards until it reaches a zone where it melts. It then becomes liquid pig iron, and the so-called gas escapes upward through the gout and it's therefore no cold gas. In addition to nitrogen and carbon dioxide, it is also contains carbon monoxide and even hydrogen and amadan. At the beginning, a field iron oxidase usually contains impurities with other elements such as a silicon. Additives such as a limestone added there react with these impurities and form the so-called slurry which floats on the liquid pig iron and can be removed from there that pig iron take from the blast furnace. It still contains up to 4% carbon, as well as other elements such as phosphorus, sulfur, silicon, and magnesium. It is very brittle and was no Schmidt's idea. By inflating the liquid pig iron with air or pure oxygen, these impurities are largely oxidize and evaporate as a gases or slag. Something like this is called a converter, and into the big iron is converted into the steel. The steel contains a maximum of 2% carbon and small traces of other elements. Steel is a hard and elastic, and one of the most important materials for humanity. Iron and steel products are manufactured with the help of the blast furnace. Iron ore, coal and other additives are filled into the blast furnace, and there is a blown in. After various chemical reactions, iron is created, which melts and is removed as liquid pig iron. The pig iron is a footer converted of the converter steel processed.
The recycled metal is sorted and lifted into the furnace called the copa. The copa is a large steel cylinder that melts the metal into the molten iron. 2800 degree molten iron flows out of the copa and into a series of the true ladies. The despolarization level removes some of the sulfur to bring it down to the levels needed to change the gray iron into the ductor iron. The here level holds the iron until they're ready for the transport to the different casting machines. The transfer level is where we add magnesium, which starts the process of transforming the metal from gray iron into the ductile iron. This ladle then feeds the individual casting machines. Each casting machine has a backup ladle and machine ladle that holds the iron about and made into the pole section's cooling iron, made up of the scrap pieces and sometimes added in this point to help bring the iron to the correct casting temperature. The casting machine has a stainless steel spinning mold inside a water cooled bath. The iron is a pure down and a trude into the spinning mold and the centrifugal pressure of the spin forces the iron to the wall of the mold. It spins until it's cool enough to extract from the machine. The molds are roughly 18 feet long, and that is the length of the single pole section. As it comes out of the casting, machine the pole section are then fed into the analyzing even inside the oven, is where the pole section's final chemistry is set and where it is fully converted into the ductile iron. The oven has different temperature zones ranging from 2000 due to 1200 various metallurgical changes take place in the oven and this determines the ultimate strength of the iron. The minimum strength requirements are 60,000 libras per square of the tensile strength, 42,000 libras per square of yield strength of the 10% elongation. Factor of this point, the pole section are moved off the line to be taken to the laser thickness gauge, which measures the wall thickness along the entire pole section. However, every fifth section is set aside for the physical property testing. This pole section will have a small coupon cut out of the iron wall, and the coupon will be brought into the lab. It is a cut shaped and a polish to accommodate the different tests, and will undergo the different tests we perform as a carp impact test a tensile test, a hardness test, and a microscopic visual test. These tests tell us if the iron has met a minimum strain characteristic, so the carbon in the iron was the higher right structure, and if the allocation factor has been achieved, positive results from this test will tell us we have a good iron, and the over oven is the set right speed and temperature, the 18 pole sections, are then staged of assembly and organized by size and the wall thickness. The individual sections are brought into through a large bay door and fed into a press one at a time of the 50 tones. Press forces the upper sections together into a pole. The pole is measured with a laser and cut to the correct length with a large band saw. Poles are moved from one station to the next with the material headline shuttles. And the next step is the drill. The whole pattern in each pole is specified by the customer and loaded into the program that runs to the CNC drills. The drill works in unusual to drill the pole on opposite sides of the same axis along the entire length. Of the pole, once one axis has been drilled, the pole will turn in a place in another axis can then be drilled. Drill patterns will often call for different hole diameters, and the drills can change whole size of the fly. The base of the pole is then heated with an infrared heater, and this will help to embed in coating to cure quickly the base of the pole, is then coated with a two-part epoxy coating called PerformSafe, part A and a part B. Of the epoxy are mixed and fed into the sprayers, the overhead sprayer coats outside of the pole, and the lens moves inside the pole and coats the interior of the pole spins the inside and outside. Coatings are applied to above the ground, Line once the pole is installed. Name plates are engraved and a letter attached to the pole. At the last stage of assembly, the top caps are attached to the name plates and installed the center line marks are added to the each pole. The poles are strapped into individual rows and then into the full bundle. The poles are then carefully loaded onto a flatbed truck for delivery to the final destination.